Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Sweet and Sour Soccer. And you are not uh, fooled by your eyes. We really are on the same screen <laughs> at the same time. I know it's rare, it never happens now, but we are here. And guys, we are going to be talking about not the Premier League today, but Good old Derby County, because on the surface of things, there seems to be some good news that Chris Kirchner, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, has had a bid accepted by Derby's administrators. Guys, we're going to dive right in, but please hit that like button and, of course, subscribe if you are new here. Now, Scott, um, I should say we are recording this around about, what, uh, 12, 12.30 UK time. About 40 minutes ago, the news broke via Sky Sports that American businessman Chris Kirchner has potentially had a bid accepted. And I believe the Derby administrators are called Quantuma. Um, what's your initial thoughts? Obviously, we're not Derby fans, but um, after what their turmoil has been like over the last year, initial perspective from you? Yeah, I think it's an interesting one because you've got to obviously consider the fact that, you know, the club could realistically go under. You know, we've seen it happy, happen, unfortunately, with Berry, And yes, no disrespect to Berry as a football club, but Derby are much bigger. But when you look at the problems they're in, it's very suggestible that like there's still a club that could go under and they need someone and they've found someone so my my initial thoughts were you know if you're a derby fan i don't think if it matters whether it's a, a saudi billionaire or whether it's i don't know the cookie monster if it's someone that's going to take over the club it's good news surely but you know you touched it in the intro there's a lot to be a bit nervy about this bloke and it also makes me wonder you know, we've seen the likes of Mike Ashley apparently interested. A few other people were interested. Those that had ties to the club as well. Makes you wonder how serious those bids actually were. Or was it just a bit of positive press for those people? Because if this is the best bid, it makes you wonder why doesn't it? But why have the administrators gone with it? Which we'll obviously jump into in a bit more detail I... now about why. I think both of us are a bit nervy about the guy. I, I would say so. I mean, first of all, we just have to say Derby fans, they they must just be thinking what is going on. I mean, you've got a decision between Chris Kirchner, who we're going to come on to in a minute, Mike Ashley or Mel Morris. I mean, it's 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 just like it's just like taking a pick of well, which STD would you rather have? Like, none of them you really <laughs> want. But if you've got to have one, I guess I'll, I'll have that. Like, it's just and not good At least chlamydia can be cured with pills or something. <laughs> I mean, that was the best analogy I could think of on the spot. And that's what you get from sweet and sour soccer. <laughs> but Scott, let's just start off with uh, Chris Kirchner. A few red flags for me. One he had um, he's been bidding for Preston North End in the last week or two. He's pulled out of that. That doesn't scream great to me. If you're looking no. to buy a championship rival and you're dilly-dallying between the two, let's not forget that uh, Chris Kirchner also was in heavily linked uh, Christmas just gone, just before the new year. And then he's gone to Preston and now back to Derby. That's, that's one thing. Um, he's also had to permanently delete his Twitter account because of previous historical homophobic and sexist tweets. That's not good. And then to top no. it all off, and listen, he's, he's worth more than me, so it's not like I'm laughing at the guy, but in terms of buying a football club, a massive club like Derby, he's a CEO of an American company, but his net worth is only $5 million, and that's only because he's the actual CEO. So you look at it and you think, is this the best that Derby can get? And I think it's interesting as well, as you touched on, apparently the bid was around 20 million for Preston, seeing what a few Preston or Fens fans were saying. Apparently when it got to the table, he then tried to negotiate a much cheaper deal than that. Um, so you have to quantify whether this, you know, whether the Derby bid is going to try and do the exact same. And you look at the company, obviously he's involved in as well. That You know, as you say, his initial net worth isn't great. And I think the company, you know, he's in charge of a tech company, which is, of course, growing. But a lot of their financing is through debt resource. And I think that's how he's going to buy Derby as well. It's been rumoured a lot of that's going to be through and it'll have to be, surely, through debt equity. And you just wonder, does he have the right intentions? And 
once again, is he really the only and best option that Derby have? Well, we've seen the recent comments of uh, Simon Jordan, of course, on Talk Sport, where he's been saying he's not a fan of this guy at all. He thinks he's just been on social media trying to promote himself, putting himself about with multiple clubs in the championship. One problem I've got, and I've tried to get an accurate figure online, but there's so many publications that quote different figures. From what I can gather, Derby's debts lie anywhere between 50 to 80 million pounds. And I'm not an accountant, but that just seems to be the figure. About 30 to 40 million in debt to the HMRC. They owe 10 to 15 million pounds to a US investment firm. Then there's a few other debts as well. How how would Derby going to want? Because we all thought the way that Derby would go forward was Mike Ashley comes in, writes off the debt, you start from square one and you try and build from potentially League One, or if they stay up. That can't happen if this guy comes in. You wouldn't have thought so, and it's weird saying that Mike Ashley's the best option, but like if his bid was serious and there's questions about that, I'd say there's even further questions now that he's not been seeing the best suitor compared to this guy. Now, don't get me wrong, I know Mike Ashley has a bad history of football club running, but one thing you would always say with that football club is that we're never going to go under. Newcastle were... Yes, they were deteriorated. Yes, they didn't have the best facilities, et cetera, et cetera. But he kept them on the straight and narrow in terms of just like, you know, you're never going to see a Newcastle situation yeah. happen with, you know, obviously what's happened with Derby. And, you know, as you said, he would have come in, he would have written off the debts. OK, the Derby County State, you know, Pride Park might have ended up as a sports direct arena. And we know that Sports Direct have ties to the Derby area. But that seemed... It seemed plausible with this guy. I think, as you say, it doesn't seem plausible. And what's also interesting is this is a guy that was in the running early December, um, then decided to pull out by Christmas and now has come back in. I think you touched on it. He just seems to be trying to put his name about, buy it, trying to buy other clubs as well. You have to wonder what his best interests are and you just hope that they are going to be good for Derby and or at least save him. Maybe he might not put in substantial money but even if he can save them and then sell it on for a profit to someone better a few years down the line, I think Derby fans would take that at the moment. I think they would. And, you know, what? The, I think the the main focus of this video, as it always should be, and I'm not, I'm not just saying this to win favour with Derby fans. I'm not just saying it to get likes and subscribers. It's always the fans that are the worst off. And, you yeah. know, you go back to through Derby's history, they've done the double. You know, they've... Brian Clough, their exploits, um, n not just, not just you know, in terms of winning trophies, but they've actually dominated the old Division One, you know, the Premier League many, many years ago. They're a massive club, and y y your heart goes out for Derby. Hopefully, the fans can have a club to support in a year, two years, five years, and hopefully, they can prosper in the future. And they'll look back on this and say, you know, it's a learning curve. We'll make sure that it doesn't happen again. Um, have you got anything else to add? Because I just feel I mean, like... My final thoughts on it was, though, you know, OK, I, I think, you know, we're a bit confused by it. I think, obviously, as you mentioned, Simon Jordan's had his say on the bloke. The one thing that I do think, though, is if he's not got his best interests at heart, so what has he actually got to gain here? Because it's not like a Mel Morris situation where he could come in and take the stadium or, you know, he can benefit financially from this so that's the only bit that you know or maybe give Derby fans a bit of hope that maybe okay you don't have this great investment portfolio but who knows maybe he's getting back American backers that are going to help him out maybe further down the line we'll see it's a bit more of a, a you know a constructor a, a words going out of my head but basically like a group of people rather than just himself maybe he's just the face of it that's the one um who knows who knows but yeah, we'll I mean, hopefully it just saves the club. That's my finishing point. Save the club and hopefully yeah. Derby can have a much better season next season. Um, provide, you know, we already know they're faced with further point deductions, etc. But need to turn it around, don't they? I completely agree. Let's end on there. Derby fans, we wish you all the luck in the world. And do us a favour if you've made it this far. Please like uh, the video and subscribe if you haven't already. We are a general football channel and we will see you again. Yes, see you on the next one. Goodbye.